Welcome back to the show. Got a special one for you today. I have Greg Alba from the YouTube channel The Real Rejects. Um, yeah, Greg Alba alongside his friend John Humphrey. Uh, they make you know reaction videos, streams, live streams. Um, you know, talks talks about movies and all sorts of stuff. Kind of what I do times like ten. And he's a really cool guy. And we had a really good conversation, so enjoy this episode with Greg Alba. 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. What have you been doing? Uh, just making YouTube videos, obviously, but um, have you been watching movies that you haven't watched before or TV shows that you've been meaning to watch? Yeah, I, um, I'm, on, I'm up to season six of mm. The Sopranos. Oh, wow. I still haven't watched that. I need to. I'm terrible with shows that have, you know, more than like two or three seasons. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Well, dude, that's your. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some of it's my attention span. Some of it's just like I have so much I want to watch. So oh, I, I just it. finished watching the um, Watchmen HBO series. That was actually, I think I like that better than the movie, actually. Yeah, that was my favorite show last year. That, yeah, that's that really good. All have been my favorite in the past year. I. I don't watch enough of those. Um, what channel is that on? Breaking uh, Bad and such. AMC. AMC. I don't watch enough of those shows. I used to watch um, Breaking Bad a little bit and then Walking Dead. I think Walking Dead just rubbed me the wrong way. Just because after a while, it's kind of the same thing. It's weird. Walking Dead is the first show I ever actively quit. <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> I mean, other shows, you kind of just fall off. Yeah. But Walking Dead, I mean, I've I've heard that. I've heard it's great now. Like, Uh I've heard it's like incredible now. Uh, Yeah. uh, It was like season eight, episode one. Mm -hmm. It was so exciting. And then I was like, but I know this show. The first episode's cool. And then it's going to get boring. (laughs) Yeah. For like the whole season. Um, Have you watched that? harley quinn cartoon yet not yet uh i've been getting back into gaming with this quarantine okay. situation and uh i haven't been sleeping much because yeah i've never same. done a, i've never done a video game review and mm-hmm. i'm and uh i really want to do a last of us two review yeah uh, i don't know how people play it. what i noticed in this landscape of gaming is if you don't there's so many games there's so oh, yeah many, and if you don't play the game that someone has, uh, someone else has played, I'm right. on the internet like you don't know games, you're not a gamer, and I'm like I don't have time to play every freaking game that exists, guys. Yeah. yeah, I stopped playing video games for like probably over a year, and then I recently got a PS4 again. Um, again, yeah, I had one another time, but um, I don't know. I, I like gave up gaming at one point, and now I'm back on it. But where are you from, by the way? Uh, I'm from Michigan. Oh, that's right. I remember you telling me that um, in messages. That's right. Yes. How's Michigan uh, for you? It kind of sucks, but you know. <laughs> I hear Michigan's the place to be right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of sick of this place. I'm looking to get out at some point, but um, that's I guess the right. worst places. <laughs> most, peop- most people who moved to, or who are from Michigan wanted to stay in Michigan permanently. I've never yeah. heard of someone wanting to leave Michigan before. <laughs> Yeah, I was born and raised here, so I'm kind of over it at this point. Have you visited other places? Yeah. Um, the furthest west I've been is um, Las Vegas. That was actually my mom's wedding. So I was oh. like nine years old at, in Las Vegas. That was kind of interesting. Is she uh, still with that guy? Yeah. 
Oh fuck! I mean, am I allowed to swear in this podcast? It's such a oh yeah, question. no am worries I- at all. <laughs> <laughs> um. Is- oh yeah, I remember you were saying um in a recent video you were playing Jedi Fallen Order. Have you finished that yet? I'm halfway through it, but then okay. I got five of us too. Uh huh. Like, uh, crap. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm playing the first Last of Us right now because I never played that one. So, uh, I, you like it? I'll probably end up reviewing that one alongside the second one, but it'll probably take me a while to beat both of them. I mean, yeah, that's the thing with me and I'm like, I'm, I'm quicker at games than I ever have been, but mm-hmm. generally speaking, it's like these guys who are like putting out views. Um, yeah last of us two already i'm like how the hell did you beat this game so early seriously (laughs) (laughs) yeah Um, jedi fallen order was very good though i'm not as big of a star wars fan as i used to be just because of the recent movies they really weren't great but um i like the um solo star wars story one that one was actually really good i uh, have you played fallen order yet yes i uh beat it once already I mean, I don't even know if I'm halfway through. I, I'm mm-hmm. at the part where you learn who. Man, I haven't been sleeping. Uh, fuck, freaking uh, sister. What's what's her name? <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, sister, sister Knight. I think. <laughs> uh, where you learn who she really is. Yeah. The uh, Padawan, um, to the captain of. This is, mm-hmm. uh, I'm forgetting all. The, all I remember is Cal. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, he does. He does a really great job, though. He's as that character. Man. I, I just finished um I just finished Gotham uh this week. Okay. Yeah, that's another shot. I mean I, I just finished that. Uh, I finished it this week. And that Cameron Monaghan guy, like he mm-hmm. he he plays like five different characters oh, yeah. essentially in Gotham. Like he he cuz he plays like before Jerome Joker as just the the Jerome the guy and then he yeah. becomes Joker and then he plays Jeremiah and he plays Jeremiah Joker <laughs> and then he plays aged after being dipped in Ace Chemicals toxic waste Joker and then I see him as Cal I, I hear he's on the show Shameless I think yes it. I've watched yeah. probably till like season four or five of that my one of my friends that got me into it agrees like after that point it's just a little too dramatic for its own good oh it becomes one of those I never got into it. I've had a lot of people recommend it to me. It's definitely a good show, but once you get about halfway through, it's not really worth watching anymore. This is such a fascinating thing we're recording on right now. It I is. No idea because I've heard of this. Uh-huh. I've heard people are recording on this, but I didn't know you could just do it from your phone. <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. That um, is like an efficient ass way to record a podcast. Like, does everyone always feel like they tell this crazy ass stuff? I mean, yeah, you got to do like the mixing and the editing and whatever. Right. This is uh, this is really impressive shit. Like, yeah. Just record on your phone. No, oh, wow. Eventually, I'll have a whole video set up and all that, but for now, I'm just kind of Mark Marin, Mark Marin slash Bill Burring it right now, and just yeah. kind of doing the audio only. But. What do you- what do you think of this Christy Elliott situation? I, uh, oh, I don't think I really heard about it. Is it something to do with him saying something racist again? Or, I don't know. That what? Seems... I was talking about his new special. No, I was joking. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I hear, I hear friggin' race stuff every five minutes, I swear. Especially now that you're, uh, you know, you're, you're calling me from Michigan. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then Jenna Marbles just had some controversy over i don't even know you know i, what? I tend I, to not pay attention I, to it um i i heard this today of the guy who plays cleveland on mm-hmm. family Guy just quit family guy are you kidding me that's crazy uh because he is uh he's a white dude huh and um it's just so weird like what gets a pass and what gets yeah later <laughs> on and it's like I uh, we did this bat we did this, we covered some emergency awesome video and all right just, yeah like, I've been about. watching him for a while too he's great yeah um, and I had this joke we were talking about the Ezra Miller situation briefly of like what's going on with him and yeah uh, that was weird he did blackface ten years ago he's not getting canceled <laughs> like it's weird what what people get can't like I'm not I don't know, blackface isn't cool right uh, it's just interesting how you know people. 
first of tweets and we're going through footage and stuff and I, I i didn't i don't really i don't follow jenna marbles really um i know she's been a influential person i just think it's like especially in the comedy field it, it can be very oh, yeah. challenging like for sure i used to go by the ryan wright persona mm-hmm. it was just a, a version of me that honed in heavily on like heavy sexual comments and right making people uncomfortable and being provocative and then i re- as I've changed as a person, I really realized I wanted to like not lean into that so much. <laughs> and fortunately, I changed before all this Me Too shit happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, oh, thank God, because that person, that level of brand would not survive today. Um, Dude, but... honestly, though, I have been watching you before you were Greg Alba and when you were Ryan Wright and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching you for a while. It's kind of crazy to be talking to you. Is it one of those uh, things where you're like, I miss the Ryan Wright days? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. I like your new. Well, yes and no. Your old videos did like make me laugh, but I can understand why you had to change it up a little bit, especially nowadays. Like, uh, yeah, there's just like a lot of kind of vulgar shit that probably wouldn't fly as much. It just, and honestly, in truth be told, I was just getting over it. Like, I just thought it was mm-hmm. old after a certain point because like i'm like how many dick jokes can i come up with <laughs> right that makes sense <laughs> you know like i do videos six days a week this is really this is this is getting tiresome <laughs> uh-huh. like, how many I mean, like after a while i'm really reaching for like the depths of depth of dick jokes and like i i i never like i've never liked like uh rape jokes ever yeah and I, I was like, that's like the next step, and I would never go there. <laughs> so I don't want. <laughs> I wouldn't... Yeah, I mean, I say some pretty fucked up shit, but usually not when the cameras are rolling or anything. Well, that's everyone. Just, just to my friends. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's the greatest. That's the greatest conspiracy from the audience. <laughs> yes, so we all say terrible things behind oh, closed yeah. doors, and usually in a joking manner. And I think that's why I like. Yeah. I think that's why we like in the nineties and stuff. I think that's why I really gravitated towards I think he has a specific line in Real Slim Shady about that actually. Yeah. Of like why I really gravitated towards Eminem. Because I'm like he got away with a lot too. <laughs> yeah, no, he still does. Him and Dave Chappelle are like the two people who are Literally. Like, doing their thing. <laughs> you know? Um man, did you watch that new special that came out? Who was it? Um Man, I wrote it down somewhere. Um crap here let me look i have a bunch of notes everywhere so uh how about the dave chappelle one uh not dave chappelle there was a special that just came out on netflix i don't know if you keep up with stand-up very much um I keep up with a few of them I, I really like tom segura's yes me too i love him and uh burt kreischer i'm a big fan of as well i haven't seen his nah I don't you, think would, you would definitely like Burt Kreischer. Um, yeah, I don't know where I wrote that down. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been keeping up with a lot of, uh, you know, like stand up and stuff like that. That's kind of what I'm into. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you watched the Titans series yet? No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm taking this kind of like the thing with the, the fucking uh, like having the Patreon and stuff is mm-hmm. that. It's like I watched so many shows there, and then yeah. I haven't been watching any TV since I got The Last of Us Two a few a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, but I want to watch Titans. I'm mm-hmm. being heavily recommended to watch Doom Patrol. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. I'm on season two of Titans currently. I'm just trying to watch first. I know um, a I know someone who works on the visual effects department for it. Okay, and so. That's been my main incentive to want to watch it again. <laughs> but um, no, there's, just, there's just so many shows, you know. It's like oh that. yeah, there's like so many. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I was watching in terms of like TV shows. Um, here, let me look uh, at another question though, because I actually was wondering. Um, I I can't explain it. But I like watching reaction videos, and some people find them like weird. Like, why? Why would you want to watch somebody like watch something? 
But I know, I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but like, what what do you think makes people want to watch reaction videos? I I don't know if I'd be able to explain it really. You know, um, I'm not gonna lie. When I first saw a reaction video, mm-hmm. I thought this was one of the stupidest things in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found out other people are doing it. Uh-huh. I didn't I didn't quite grasp what it must be like like mm-hmm. uh, what why people are gravitated towards it and um is that my my main issue was that when i was seeing react now and it's really changed like significantly right. now um my main issue when i would watch reaction videos was there didn't seem to be much personality or content mm-hmm. around the reaction like maybe during the reaction you might get something but like before and after there right. wasn't much of a there wasn't really much of anything and so we I we always try to make it a little bit especially nowadays we we, we try to make like mm-hmm. a little bit of a show with it like an actual video where right like if there's no reaction you still get like a decent commentary and uh you know we still edit those videos and stuff <laughs> where, yeah right and um i i think what Nowadays, it's like a lot of people do that now, though. You know, mm-hmm. there was a time where it was just like react and say subscribe, and that was about it, right? Um, but I think what it is is it's that feeling. The best way I can describe it is when you and I, I'm, I'm obviously asked this question so often, <laughs> right? I still don't know how to efficiently explain it. <laughs> is uh, it's like if if I love something. Like mm-hmm. if I'm hanging out with you, Spencer, and I'm like, hey, I love this video. Have you seen this video, Spencer? I'm like hanging out next to you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's really funny, man. You got to check this shit out. <laughs> and then I show it to you. And the whole time I'm hoping you're going to laugh at it. Uh-huh. It's not my video, but mm-hmm. it's a video I find funny. Right. And I want to see what you think of it. And then sure. if I like you're if you're laughing at a video that I thought was funny and then you're surprised, like, oh, yeah, this shit's hilarious. And uh, like that, watching you experience that, it, you got to relive it. Like so every once in a while. Yeah. You know, someone might say, especially like with the trailers and stuff, like mm-hmm. feeling that level of excitement that someone has. Like, yeah, Tyro Magnus is a buddy of mine. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, I remember there was the upgrade trailer and it, mm-hmm. it like hit me way late in the game. Like, this is it. This is the reaction feeling that everyone's always asking me. Like, what the what, what is it? <laughs> like, after years of doing this? I think I finally f- figured it out. Right. <laughs> it's, it's sort of been this weird ether. I've just been living and. Um, uh, Tyra Magnus, uh, I, I hit him up and I was like, dude, I just saw this trailer for uh, this movie called Upgrade. Mm-hmm. You, you gotta watch this trailer. You got, I guarantee you're gonna love it. And then he watched it and then he was fucking eating up that trailer and right. I was recorded a reaction to it. And I was watching him do it and I was feeling like, um, elation, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> like watching him love it. Then it started hitting me right then and there. You know, I, and I, and I feel like everyone has a wide variety of reasons for why they like because some people don't like, you know, yeah, if you're commentating through it, or some people kind of just want the personality of someone who's just kind of quiet the whole time and just taking it in. Yeah, there's and, definitely uh, there's also a wide variety of like different personalities that you can find like. If you don't like one person, there's probably like 50 million other people doing the same thing their own different way. Yeah. I mean, it didn't used to be that way, but now it's like, damn, there's like a, people with millions of followers who are reactors. I, I hadn't even heard of till like recently. Mm-hmm. Before there was like four of us. <laughs> now. Uh, this just came to mind. What did you think about the whole like fine bro situation when they were trying to like capitalize on um, reaction videos? I don't know. It's kind of like when people march in the streets and say white lives matter. Yeah, <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. It's like, guys, no one's saying your life doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they definitely that, came back from that for sure. I think they're doing a lot better now. Like, I mean, they're always getting heat. Oh, uh, yeah. Just to clarify, because no one picks up on it. Not everyone picks up on jokes. I don't mm-hmm. think it's as extreme as that with the white lives that. It's that thing of like you don't need to be threatened, guys. <laughs> like right. trying to coin this. Like their style is very different. Like their shit's very hyper edited. 
Mm -hmm. and um you know you're cutting around to people whereas like usually what most reaction channels do unless it's like a tv show or a movie they usually just watch the whole thing in one take right yeah like it's 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 different that way um right now uh there's been a lot of i mean it's kind of just flown under the radar because there's Mm -hmm. so much other important shit going on and other things really (laughs) taking over twitter but something that's flown under the radar right now is um a lot of employees and former employees have been speaking out against the kind of work environment that the fine brothers provided for people really i did not hear about that at all and a lot of people haven't but it was it's like i i know someone who worked there before and i don't want to like right you like read through the fucking if you know me well enough and you could see who i'm friends with you might be able to figure it out but uh but the uh but i've known other people who have worked there as well. And then they, people, and there are plenty of people who I don't know who, who just started going public about it. Yeah. About the toxic work environment that it was working with those, uh, the two brothers and the kind of employers they were. And mm. I'm sure they're changing it now because, but this was yeah. happening during like the black, like when the black lives matter protests were just kicking off. Mm. And, uh, you know, and when all that was going on, like, and, and that was what everyone was focused on. So no one had time to fucking focus on right. this random YouTube channel run by these two guys who are barely in front of the camera for their own channel. <laughs> yeah, <know>? they really <laughs> like, they really weren't in front of the camera much before, but now like, they really took a back seat if they're even involved with it anymore, which I feel like they would be, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, I think they wanted to branch out. Right. The thing about YouTube is, like, what's weird is there's some, uh, there are kids like my girlfriend works at a school and mm-hmm. she'll meet these kids who want to grow up to become influencers. And yeah. YouTube. Um, and most people who are making it right now on YouTube, at least if you're in your 20s or older, didn't grow up dreaming about doing this you know yeah that's interesting to think about yeah and so a lot of people have found it as a career path and i think they wanted to branch out and and most of us do most people who do youtube Mm -hmm. want it's really uh some type of stepping stone of sorts you know um and some people like find it and and they're content and they just want to keep it there they just want to make it like this is my platform this is what i do yeah I, um, I understand that, but at the same time, the person I am, I definitely would want to branch out eventually. Yeah, and that's kind of like what I do. That's the other thing that I've done in quarantine is like mm-hmm. not going out on the weekends. Is I've done more than just watch TV and play video games. I've been able to write a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm trying to just get that going. And there's like little updates I get here and there. Got another one just yesterday. I. I'm waiting to like say something when something's officially like on paper. It's like I keep we keep getting like meetings with these like directors and people and blah blah okay. blah. But, Very cool. But it's like until something's on paper, it's like it's cool. It's like this is the most the furthest I've ever gotten in that realm. <laughs> That's very cool though. But I'm like waiting for. I need something to be like. Oh, oh, this is, oh my God, we got, we finally got, we got, finally got a fucking deal. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, um, I'm, I was going to ask you what is kind of like the end goal or slash just like your general goals in terms of what you want to do with your career. My main passion, I've always loved being in front of the camera and performing. I, I have, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like, I feel like most uh, my main passion is writing, and I also get the impression that most writers want to act too. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, like the most self conscious of actors, <laughs> oh, uh, writers. I mean, because a lot of times when you're writing, you you kind of just ima- you, you you act shit out in your own head. You're doing the acting out when you're mm-hmm. writing, and uh, a lot of times, like there's famous writers who originally were setting out on the path of acting and then became writers. Like mm. people like Quentin Tarantino or Aaron right. Sorkin, like those are probably my two favorite screenwriters, and they started off as uh, pursuing acting first. Yeah, it was vice versa. So for me, those go hand in hand. My main passion would want to be in in writing, and I want to. 
with with the stuff that's getting off that's been making the like what feels like forever to me but according to other people who have actually broken into the business that i know of like um uh i i don't know if i'm allowed to say there's someone i know who just landed a big directing gig for a well, big show that's pretty uh, cool. <laughs> he's not a youtuber or anything but uh, right yeah, it's public yet uh but I, I just learned it two days ago. I was like, oh, shit, dude, that's great. <laughs> so uh, the and according to like these people who like are working, the like the progress that we've been making on on the, the, the side projects I've had going. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good progress, all things considered for original right. concepts, because usually original concepts take can take years to finally get pe- producers or some, whatever to be like, all right. We're funding. You can take right. and, and according to the steps that we've gone through, it's been pretty good. So um, my main passion would be like writing and getting like, uh, like ha- I would love to have a show uh, mm. that, that I'm like head writer of uh, or creator of. And then, uh, yeah. And it's probably like doing like small roles here and there. Like I, I do love acting. Like I, and, um, you know, like running the channel can be, I have like a million thoughts going on at once when I'm doing shit. <laughs> right. Because cause I'm like, I'm aware of the camera. I'm aware of the, uh, the, edit, the time it's going to take to edit something. Oh, I got commentary. Uh, I got to make some jokes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Other stuff to film today. Um, and it's like the, I want to just do more collaborative team efforts with people. Like when we do sketches, the, the general conceit of how they go is I I come up with them and then I write them out and then uh, John usually does like the uh, camera department, the center of the lighting and uh, then I usually do the, the the head editing of it and it's it should be the, the really tiny sketches or the really long sketches, doesn't matter which one and so John really helps out with the he he also like the most technical shit is the stuff that John is like the expert at that I always rely on him for <laughs> right um, with the filming and then usually I'm directing it too like and it's gonna be hard because I'm like thinking about everything at once when I'm trying to do it <laughs> so so was it just you that started the channel initially was it or was it you and John that both started it the way the in- inception of it went was um, we conception of it went was that uh god it was like six five six years ago something like that and um the time he was in college i wasn't (laughs) and so uh i was working at some company and and then i was like we we should start a youtube channel like just start reviews and i just wanted to do movie reviews like weekly i didn't know how to edit i didn't know how to film i didn't know how to do any of that and um and he was actually in film school. So nice. we we started it up. And um, originally, I wanted to do a thing called stoner reviews. <laughs> um, him living at home wasn't a good idea. And I didn't want to get branded as just some stoner. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, I guess that's not always the best. <laughs> and uh, I really, we really were big fans of the real, re- uh, the Devil's Rejects. And mm-hmm. uh, so I was like, let's call ourselves the Real Rejects. And I, so I, I just fell in love with that title. That's and, a it's a pretty good title. I'll, I'll give that to you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And so, um, uh, it's just so weird to think about. There was a time where I remember, like, I was driving and I was like, "Hey, the real rejects. What do you think about that?" <laughs> so, um, and then, um, uh, what happened? Yeah. So then, I was living at uh, a some, uh, a back house, mm-hmm. uh, and then, you know, like I had a job, and so I bought like all this equipment and shit and like green screen and all the lights and whatever. And then I had John spend like three and a half hours figuring out how to set it all up. <laughs> so, right. And, but when we were doing it, it's like, uh, we're trying to do the movie reviews weekly and we were consistent on that for, for a while, but you know, the channel was not really growing, didn't even pass a thousand subs. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, eventually, um, I was learning, I was, sh- I was watching him edit. So I learned how to pick up basic editing and mm-hmm. basic filming. And, then I just started doing a bunch more on my own and he was in school. So he just couldn't really commit to it. And 
but I could. So I had a full-time job and I was working like 40 hours a week as a receptionist at a doctor's office. And then in the evenings and in the morning and sometimes on my lunch break, I'll work on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I, I discovered, like I was so learned how to edit. I learned how to do all these things. Then um, I just took it into my own hands. I just had to embrace it. I was like, I have to learn how to do is that that can often happen. I noticed with a lot of people who start up channels together, right? If people will, a lot of times one person is able to do significantly more and really commit while mm -hmm. the other person can't. And then a lot of times it just stifles people and they just stop doing it. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really have a choice right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to do it. And eventually it started panning out, started mm -hmm. getting a bunch of subs. And um, at that time, it's like, I would, I would definitely, John was still like a presence. Like he would, he would come by a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if I ever wanted like him to come, I started to just open up the door to like, I wanted to get a bunch of guests and started bringing right. guests and let that be a big part of it to have a bit of a talk show vibe. Like I had some real big, like, like, uh, here's how I wanted to change this up. And mm -hmm. uh, eventually, and then like, you know, for any sketches, John was usually involved. Um, so the majority of the time and anything, if we happen to get some random brand deal, uh, definitely bring him on that but it wasn't until like two years ago he was working at Blumhouse and his department there shut down and I wanted to bring the channel back to less YouTube video reactions and make it more about um, fandom and film again like mm. we're back to its roots a little bit of why this channel started and because I wanted to open up the door to go on the channels that I love um, like screen junkies and like all these collabs that I've been able to fortunately to do in the last couple of years or get hit up about um, like new rock stars, mm -hmm. schmo down the schmoes in general, uh, the, all these other things that open up the door. What it really helped was redirecting the channel back to movies and mainly about that again. Cause before it was like, yeah, let's do all the try not to laugh. Some other fuck. <laughs> right. Don't hug me. I'm scared videos. And, <laughs> and once in a while we'll do that, but that's right. Now. Um, so what, uh, then, then, then I was like, let's partner up. Let's bring it back. Cause I, I still loved, like, it always felt like this was the original, even though I was essentially doing majority of it on my own for many years by this point, mm -hmm. I always loved the on screen chemistry John and I had. And, the kind of back and forth because like we're very different personalities but we're in unison on so many things at the same time yeah uh, but we also feel differently towards so many things and so i just th like our back and forth was always really good and then like you know, he's my childhood best friend and we did improv together mm. that i was like i just want to bring it back to this like just the, like let's let's just do this <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and so yeah uh so, so yeah, I mean, it's like I kind of just like threw him back into it, um, mm. and now we're now he's to my left. <laughs> Before, when it was only YouTube that had to be done, when it was just YouTube, mm -hmm. it was it was manageable. I think that's yeah. the way for it is for a lot of people. When you have, a, but when you have to do like the Patreon and wanting to enhance the he the editing, yeah, be as like heavily guest reliant either. Mm -hmm. Um. He's like the, the, it, I feel like it would be a diminishing to say he's only like a helper because he's not. <laughs> he's he's, he's like the brains and you're, and you're the, the face of the operation. I'm like, <laughs> we're, we're a little bit of both. A little know? bit of both. <laughs> I'm definitely more of like the business guy. Like I, mm. I, I'll go in and I'm constantly looking at like how to make things better and how, and like what to evaluate and why this isn't growing and what to change and what to enhance. So a lot of time I'm the, and like the sketches I'll come up with and like the, the, the creative stuff and all of that. I'm definitely the leader of it. I'll say. Yeah. Uh, it feels weird to state when he's like, right here. <laughs> but I, I think, yeah, it's like, anyone who's you are beneath knows me. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but he, it's like to say he's just the helper is like, right. That's far from the case of it. I would definitely say, like, I, I still reference him as partner, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, partner in crime, <laughs> yeah. hetero, hetero life mate. 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you know, like um, he's more he's more than the Andy Richter to my Conan O'Brien. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Oh my god, I was just watching a movie. What was it? Oh, it was Scary Movie 2. My friend was just putting it on. Andy Richter. And Andy was like, I think he was saying the N-word. And I was like, oh, my God. I never thought I'd hear Andy say the N-word. Oh, Jesus. I did. I don't even remember that. Yeah, apparently. I watch, I'm going to go back and watch it. And, like, he didn't say it. And then everybody's going to hate me. But... Well, if, they, if he did, I think the past is the fact that. Oh, yeah. Especially for Scary Movie, like. Oh my God, those movies were very raunchy. I think the past would also come from the fact that I think Keenan Ivory Wayne's directed it and mm-hmm. the Wayne's brothers co wrote it. <laughs> so, oh, yep. So I'm like, they must have been cool with him saying it on for this thing. Mm-hmm. If it was just a bunch of white people who made it and they improvised those jokes. Around, right. Like, that that, that might be a little bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, but about Screen Junkies, I was actually really excited when you first started going on movie fights because at the time, I was watching both, and then, like, you guys collabed and all that. And then, did you win the first time you went on? I went on years ago, Mm. and I didn't know the show as well. I was a fan, but I didn't know it as well. Mm-hmm. and I sucked. I was awful. <laughs> um, I was really bad, uh-huh. but I don't even revisit that. <laughs> <laughs> I just I did... remember that you started well, like you won a handful of times. <laughs> yeah, what happened was I eventually got invited back mm-hmm. uh, because I'm uh, friends with JTE, and then mm-hmm. he recommended me he actually really vouched for me to give me another chance. After <laughs> well, that's that that's nice of him to do. Because um, I understood the game. The thing, the missing element of the game that I did not quite latch onto when I first went on mm-hmm. was I didn't uh, really grasp how the, the fact that I have to really take, it's not just saying why your pick is the best. It's really more about taking down the other people's picks right and that's it's kind literally of like, like a movie debate club it really is and i didn't grasp that so mm-hmm. i was good at attacking other people's and I, and i wasn't prepared for what people would say to take down mine either right i was and just people like, are ruthless on that show <laughs> they, they're pretty cutthroat yeah and when i went back on years later i was super nervous but then i got the first clean sweep of the uh of the newest rendition when there was just four questions and uh, I took it very serious. I took it very serious oh, because yeah. I'm a big, I'm a, I can be like a, uh, I don't know if I agree to do something, I just want to do my best. Mm-hmm. So like, doesn't matter if the channel's bigger or if it's smaller. I, and I, and I, I really, I've always had that kind of work ethic for the long time, mm-hmm. but it really got hammered into me actually when I saw, Harloff do a one-on-one interview with Dan Merle and he talked about that uh-huh. and I just really want to make sure I apply that and what especially if I go on someone else's shindig is I, like I want to make sure that I don't half-ass it and then with Screen Junkies too it was a it was a chance of redemption because I sucked at mow down and uh, <laughs> and and then that was like what movie fights I know I can be good at and uh, mm-hmm. uh, I really feel like this is an opportunity to showcase a movie commentary analysis side of mine, because most people I know will come to hear the real rejects for the reactions and whatever. And some people do listen to the commentary and the personality mm-hmm. side. But for movie fights, I was like, I know I can be good at this game. And I, I just wanted to do things. This shit stresses me the fuck out, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, uh, I do so much prep. Like uh-huh. I get pretty anal about it and one time i didn't do any prep mm. I, I did like some research but i didn't write make notes and then i fucking did a terrible job <laughs> so i was like <laughs> i gotta do i gotta make sure i prep and, right uh, yeah like i don't know how dan does it so well like dan can go into a match with barely any notes and it is like second nature to him it's fucking insane i don't understand it 
Yeah, he's, he's incredible at what he like. He's just a, this bank of knowledge and great with articulation and um, breaking stuff down in sight. Like it, 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 he's a B. Like I had a one on one fight with him, and I, I obviously didn't win, but to have him say that that was the, the hardest he's ever fought for the belt, and to Damn. yeah, and on a following news episode, he said that was probably his favorite fight, and like. To me, that was enough. <laughs> yeah, me, I was like, and I'm not, I'm not minimizing anything. I didn't feel like there are times I might play an internet game and I'll, I'll, we, I might lose and I might be like, I might just be in the slumps about it. Um, but for that one, I was like, just the fact that I managed to hold up a great fight against this guy, <laughs> was, right? That was like, that's all I needed. I, I like Dan Merle is like John Wick in creating movies like you might get a few good jabs in but at the end of the day he's still gonna win yeah yeah but I didn't want to go in with like the lose the like I'm going to lose mentality I was like, right I, just, I want like a lot of time you know I think a lot of us we we might run for something run towards something for a couple of reasons and they, mm-hmm. those usually come down to recognition or respect I think. Yeah. And, um, and I, and I feel like for a lot of what I do, it's like, if there's something I'm trying to achieve, I guess it's respect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like that's kind of what I, because I mean, even with our channel, like the real rejects, like it, it might, we, we could, we don't have like the best quality. I know that like when it comes Mm -hmm. to, like audio especially like it's kind of like yeah. the back of my fucking head <laughs> um but what i know that we put in the work though especially for the commentary side and the editing when a lot of people don't so a lot of people have told me we don't have to mm-hmm. but i'm like yeah but i've kind of set a standard for ourselves now that if we don't do that <laughs> I'm yeah feel less than so uh, I feel that for sure. Yeah, that's just kind of this just comes with a work ethic. When you set a certain standard for yourself, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you just kind of want to. Because before the channel was, I mean, might have been looser with the Ryan Wright days and the videos might have been shorter, but there was nowhere near as much editing into them as there are now. <laughs> yeah. Like it really was just like click and then, you know, I might, I'll jump cut it, but that was about it. <laughs> I mean, People people often say that, you know, just do it all one take. Don't edit it. Like, it's fine. People like it when it's raw. But at the same time, when you edit it, yes, like, it can kind of diminish the, like, message you're trying to portray. But at the same time, like, it can kind of help it out and make it more entertaining for people, too. Because sometimes just all one take, you know, you don't want to sit some sit and watch somebody stare at the screen for like a minute straight without saying anything. I mean, at least not me personally. I guess there's some people who would like that, but there are people who like that. And then they're like, Tyrone doesn't edit his videos. Mm -hmm. And, and I I think like Tyrone is just like, he's so fucking like entertaining as a human. (laughs) Oh yeah. 100%. (laughs) Like in his reactions, especially like he's, he's so entertaining and, he doesn't do as much commentary as us, but I got to say, like, um, he's always coming from a genuine heartfelt place. And, and, and he's, to me, I've always viewed him as like the Mr. Rogers of reactions. <laughs> like, Literally. <laughs> like someone who doesn't, uh, he doesn't edit his videos really. He doesn't, he might, but he, he'll take his time. He'll really mm-hmm. take his time in the talk and the, in the talking points. There are times I'm not going to say he never like there are times he'll go into like really big discussions. And honestly, what he's been doing in terms of all the like the discussions uh, since the Black Lives Matter movement have really erupted across the country and the world. Mm-hmm. Like discussions are incredible. Like he's incredible on what he like. I, I sent him this very long voice message about like, dude, you, you got to keep doing this. Like you're you're showcasing this different side of you. And then every when he's passionate yeah. about something, it shows. And um and I love that about his quality of videos. Oh yeah, but for sure. He, so 
like his style without wanting to edit to keep it raw really does work for him. It really mm-hmm. does. I mean, obviously he's doing better than us. Uh, the, for, for our end though, I don't know. There's just, there's something in us that just wants to do. And there can be a, a version though, where you do too much editing for, especially for the kind of shit that we do. Oh yeah. There's times where like the commentating, the commentary section, I'm like, it doesn't need to be edited this much. Mm-hmm. We've gotten those comments before too. <laughs> like, <laughs> You might want to dial back on some of that editing. <laughs> so it's like trying to find that balance of like you know we do if, if we were that channel that does one video a week we would do mm-hmm. way more editing but for like the patreon videos and the youtube videos the fact that we try to get at least one video up a day on youtube and then a couple of videos on patreon that we do edit like uh it, it can we'll we'll be we already work six to eight hours a day six days a week so it's like we'd be working like 10 to 12 hours a day if we were doing like double the editing now right so yeah. Uh well, another question for you. Uh I've never really heard anybody answer this. Would you prefer Mjolnir or Stormbreaker if you had to choose like if you could use one of those weapons in battle? Um damn, you know. <sighs> I've never been the biggest Mjolnir fan. I I think it's cool, especially when Captain America had it in Endgame. Um, but yeah, I think Stormbreaker is pretty badass, I gotta admit. I mean, I like Mjolnir. I like what Mjolnir represents. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's fucking Thor's hammer, right? And right. Stormbreaker. I, I keep thinking of God of War. Uh, <laughs> Stormbreaker's got the blade, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just so cool, though. Like, it's bigger... <laughs> It's, I don't know, it just has more to it. It's, and it's like, it, it, it's longer, bigger, but it's not as, it really sounds like we're describing a dick. <laughs> but it's, it like, it's not a, like, the, the hammer's like this giant cinder block, you know? <laughs> like, right. But the, uh, and, uh, but the, I mean, the Stormbreaker doesn't have the same thing, though, right? Where you, uh, you know, like in Thor 1, where he just places the hammer down on Loki's chest and keeps him there? Yeah. Can you do that with Stormbreaker? Or do you need to be... I, I think that you don't need, like, uh, to have the powers of Thor to be able to lift it. But I I'm, I would imagine it's pretty heavy. I mean, Groot lifted it kind of with his arm. And then Thanos kind of did, too, I think, when in Endgame when... Um, he had Thor pinned down and he was like pushing it into his chest. He like kind of was holding it, but I think, I don't know. I'd have to watch it again closely, but I don't know. That's that's a good question. Stormbreaker. I love Stormbreaker. Yeah. Stormbreaker just looks like, you know, it's, it's, it's it's got the things that's that Milner can do, but with a Mm -hmm. blade. And plus Groot's arm is the handle, which makes it like 10 times cooler. (laughs) Yeah. There you go. See, this is more. Um, yeah, I, I like Stormbreaker. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Um, do you have any social media you want to plug? I'm sure you have plenty of stuff to plug. So anything you want to do, feel uh, free. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you just follow us the Real Rejects on uh, at Real Rejects on Instagram. Years ago, um, some guy hit me up be like yo can i use real rejects for my instagram and that's how i like greg alba uh-huh. like yeah fucking man i'm honored oh you. no and now i'm like oh shit should i have done that mm-hmm. <laughs> i wasn't I wasn't thinking long term and uh and uh so at real rejects on instagram at the real rejects on twitter and facebook and then at the greg alba on uh instagram and twitter i uh, you john does the uh John handles the social media of the real rejects more than I do. Mm. I mainly use uh, the Greg Alba ones. I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was really fun. Uh, Loved talking to him. He was a super cool guy. Hopefully I'll have him on again sometime. Uh, I think I'm going to reach out to his friend John and see if he'd be down to get on the podcast at some point. Um because it sounds like I need to talk to him as well. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to go to my socials, uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Um, my Instagram is pop underscore culture underscore podcast. If you go to my Facebook, it's 
at Pop Culture Podcast SH or just search PCP. Should be pretty easy to find. Uh, also, on that Facebook page, if you scroll a little bit, you'll be able to find my merch store. Got a lot of stuff available. Got a Blockbuster inspired uh, uh, hoodie slash also a tank top and shirt. And I think it's on a hat as well. Uh, and also, pretty sure I have it on a coffee mug. But yeah, I have a lot of other merch, um, a lot of cool shit there. So if you want anything there, go check it out. It's on the Bonfire website. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but, you know. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a really fun one. Um, And I'll be back either on Wednesday or next Saturday.